Hey all, Joe here, and here we are for How to Garchomp Part 1. Now in this video, I'm going to be going over some of the basics slash my first impressions of Garchomp, and of course, there will be a Part 2 and a Part 3 that go a lot more in-depth, so make sure to check those out when they do come out. Also, do vote in the comment section below, and of course, the straw poll, and uh, that's kind of how I'm going to pick the people for the next week. With all that said, though, let's get started. So, to my first impressions, the first thing is that Garchomp feels like a pretty balanced fighter that focuses a little bit more on offense than everything, but excels at most aspects of the game. In general, it feels like Garchomp is a very strong fighter, has a lot of positives, and doesn't really fail at any part of the game. He's very good, maybe not the best at everything, but a very balanced fighter in my opinion. But as far as his offense is specific, I have to say that he has one of the better offense gains in the entire game, with his dig, which can get him close up to the enemy very easily, of course the forward X, and all your claw attacks, and etc. He has a lot of different attacks, which can easily get you close to your opponent, and then once you get close to your opponent, you can just punch them over and over and over again. You just have a lot of really good combos, and in general, a really good offense game, as well as a okay game and everything else. Now, a thing that you wouldn't really expect me to say is that I also feel like his battle style is at least somewhat safe. Many of his moves have very big hitboxes, some of them make you go underground such as Dig, and some of them just let you go in and out and are very easy to cancel, so in general, you're pretty safe when you're playing this character. Also, a lot of these moves are kind of hard to counteract, so you got that on your side too. In general, I'd say he's a pretty safe fighter, at least compared to the other offensive fighters. Now the next thing to say is, first off, he has a lot of HP, which means you can win a lot of your trades if you hit the opponent once and they hit you once, then you're probably going to win the trade because you have more HP, as well as your extra damage that you have versus the opponent. Another thing, of course, is his variety of mix-up options, slash his kind of safe options, and also that he can go into his running stance to help his offense game even further and allow him to go even more ham, because his running stance can actually help in that sense too. The running stance is probably one of the things that you won't really see way too much, because I haven't seen many people actually utilize it, but it's a very nice stance. It lets you go in, it lets you stay out, and it lets you space very good as this character. I recommend to try to learn that. It just makes you a lot better of a fighter, and it's a really nice thing that Garchomp has in this kit. Next, I want to say he's actually somewhat good at afar. Now, you wouldn't really expect this to happen because, you know, he's an offensive close-range fighter, but, you know, in at least the field phase, he does decently from afar. His far-range attacks, in general, go behind the enemy and force them to come near you or allow you some time to get near them and start, of course, the beatdown. He does have some attacks that attack from the front, but the majority of his good ones go behind the enemy and allow you to approach, which is really nice and something that really I've only seen Garchomp have. As for the dual phase, of course, he has pretty much no ranged attacks at all, but the thing about it is that it really doesn't hurt him way too much, and it doesn't bother him way too much because he has so many great ways to get in, and this is what I really feel like makes him a good fighter. He's pretty good in the field phase, and at the same time, he's pretty good in the dual phase. He can do decently versus most characters, and I feel like in general, he's just pretty dang strong and above average compared to most of the cast. Something else to say is that his Mega is actually pretty nice, and it's quite easy to combo all your attacks into your burst attack as his Mega if you do have to do that, it's just a really good hitbox on his Mega's burst attack. It also gives you a good damage increase in general, and of course always allows you for some of them Mega only combos. And also it lets you get through enemy projectiles in the dual phase, which is what all the Megas do, but it's very useful as Garchomp as sometimes those projectiles can somewhat counter you, but when you're in your Mega of course you just break right through those. Now we're off to his basic playstyle, and as for the basic playstyle, I feel like he's a primarily offensive character, but he does have quite a bit of good defensive options. Most of the time you'll be trying to go in with your running stance, your claw attacks, or dig and try to get the huge damage from all of those and try to kill the opponent. But luckily, Garchomp really isn't that one-trick pony that some other characters may be. He has some nice defensive, strong, and weak attacks, as well as in his field phase, he has quite a bit of pretty good projectiles that of course follow the enemy. I'd say that he's a pretty basic character, but if played with good reads, you can outplay the enemy a ton with him. So in the field phase, I feel like Garchomp is okay. Now, he doesn't have any super special far range attacks, but the ones that he does have are pretty dang good. Maybe not the best, but you know, they're good enough. Most of them go behind the enemy when charged, and this forces the enemy to either shield, or makes them come closer to you, and both are very good situations for Garchomp. When this happens, it's your perfect time to engage as Garchomp, as you have the pressure on your side, and of course you can get him with all of those engagement tools that I've been mentioning over and over again. My personal favorite is Dig, as it'll dodge any attack that the enemy tries to send as you while you're coming in, but of course his other tools work pretty well too. As well, you have a very nice aerial X in the field phase to get in, and from there you can just mash X and try to switch the phases with your homie attack. Of course, there are bad parts to his field phase, and one of those bad parts is that for his long-range attacks, you have to charge them for them to be useful for the most part. Some of them you don't have to charge, but you kind of do for a lot of them. Now, they don't have the longest charge times, but if the enemy has a quick anti-arrow or some grand projectiles like Braxton, it can be pretty hard to set up your projectile. Of course, you can just try to go in instead, but you really have to make sure to be safe because they could also just try to outspace you while you're going in. As for the dual phase, I feel like he does a little better here in some ways and worse in other ways. 
The benefits is that he has the running stance, which makes him a lot more mobile and makes so he can outplay the opponent a lot more. But of course, the negative is that he has no longer any long range attacks like he had in the field phase, so that can become a problem. What this means is that for the most part, you'll have to be a lot more offensive in this mode. You can't really stay back or else they'll just try to camp you, and going in will really just be your best choice. Luckily, he's very good at going in in this mode with the extra speed and all the extra engagement tools that he gets in the dual mode, so it's really not much of a problem to go in. Of course, Dig in particular is amazing at either going in all the way trying to hit them, or as a good mix-up tool by jumping out of the Dig midway and then going for something like a counterattack or a grab. He does pretty dang well in dual phase with his high HP, and of course he can win a lot of trades. In general, I say he's a pretty great character in the dual phase. But yeah, of course he does have some negatives, and the first negative is that if the opponent knows how to counter engagements, then it can be pretty hard for you to do well in the dual phase. Versus dumb foes, of course you can just go ham and engage over and over again, but against smarter enemies, you'll have to mix up your ways of going in if you really want to win, which of course you should probably do with any character anyways. I wouldn't really say that he has an innate problem with long range attack and enemies that spam a lot, but it really just depends on how well you know how to counter them and how well you know the matchup if you're going to do well versus long range enemies or if you're going to do bad versus them. As for some tips and tricks as Garchomp, the first thing I'd say is try to cancel your dig mid dig sometimes. Now I almost never see anybody doing this, but it's a very very good option. I bet a lot of you don't even know that you can cancel your dig mid dig. So you just have to start your dig and you can jump out of it or you can press R and it'll cancel it. There you go, it's really nice. It allows you to come out of the dig early and then after that you can go for a grab or you can just go for a counter or you can just try to punch the enemy and they probably won't see it coming. Most enemies just won't guess that you're going to go for this and it's a really great mix up option, especially online and especially when you're playing versus people that have been playing against a lot of Garchomps that just spam the dig and try to hit you at melee range with the dig. A thing after that I'd say, try out Togekiss. Now I haven't really seen anyone else saying this, but I've been having a lot of fun with her. Her speed can be very good on Garchomp as it lets you go in, lets you go out, and generally lets you space a little bit better as this guy. As well the HP up is okay, and the other half of the support, Rotom, can be pretty useful as you have a lot of moves that knock up the enemy into the air and you can combo from there with Rotom. Finally, I'd say, if possible, pick a oval stage. Now, I love these stages as a Garchomp because they allow me a little bit of time to set up my charging projectiles, and then I can just run to the right, and then become very close to the enemy because, you know, it's an oval. It's long, and then it's short. Personally, I just really love this fact, but maybe it's just me. Still, one of my favorite things to do is Garchomp. Just pick an oval stage if you can possibly do that. Finally, I feel like Garchomp will be generally good, but probably not the best. He has really high HP, high damage, a good engage game, some pretty nice speed, and okay projectiles in the field phase of course. Overall, it's a very solid fighter, but I can't really say that he's the best at any of these things, and a lot of other fighters just beat him at one thing in particular, which is a bit of a problem for him. Still, I can definitely see a future in this fighter, as in general, he's very good, and does okay in most of the matches that I've seen so far. And there you have it, my part one for how to play Garchomp. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it maybe taught you something. And of course, if I said something that was completely wrong or said something that gets, you know, changed in the future or maybe I'm just not right right now, then make sure to tell me in the comment section below. Or if you just have any tips, we're all trying to help each other get better at this game, so do that if you possibly can. Of course, also in the comment section below, vote for who you want next time, and I'll probably have another straw poll for the next time. And then I'll pick the winner of that and, you know, just keep going from there. I have about four or five straw poll winners that I'm probably going to be doing for the next videos, but you'll probably vote for the people after those winners. With all that said though, like, comment, subscribe, hope you enjoyed, and I'll be seeing you all next time.